these people are sharing a bit of their be best practice. And if you get to see all this great practice from across the world, it inspires people. It really gives you a chance to see uh, the best practice, but also be part of some of the best practice around the world. Sometimes I think you have a bit of a tendency when you're new to feel that you've got to manage it yourself because if you go and ask for help, it's very difficult to admit that you don't know because you feel so insecure already. A certain point where something just goes click and if the teachers don't recognise that click, that kind of talent, the ability, the skill, the potential, and encourage it in their student at whatever age, then it's lost. Your classroom setup shows who you are as a teacher. If all the desks are faced, you know, to the front of the room, you kind of believe you're the, the leader of the show and it's the teacher's show, but um, we're kind of going to talk about how in our classrooms, the setup just really expresses who we are as a teacher and how our students can learn from us by the setup. I feel like it kind of speaks to them that they're welcome to get up out of their seats, they're welcome to go work wherever it's comfortable for them, and it's something that they've commented on multiple times that they, they just really appreciate that we can move around and that they, there's not always this one spot that they're forced to work in. Well, one of the things I love about all the educators that I've net networked with is the global perspective that I get. I get such a diverse level of opinions and points of view and resources, and it's very, that can be very energizing. And I had the students make scared faces above the screen, so they were looking shocked and scared and really silly. We basically took those pictures and we pointed out how silly it was that we were getting stressed out over, over just a one-shot test. Uh, we're concerned with with um, children's thinking, um, how they think about the situations that they are dealing with, and how those thoughts could influence uh, their emotions and their behaviors, and learning how to regulate those thoughts so that they can perform optimally. School is something they have to survive rather than really experience, and I have kids that hate school after fourth grade. My mission as a teacher became that I wanted to make sure these kids really love going to school still. It's so rewarding as a teacher to be able to see the excitement in these kids' eyes when they, when they go home and they're just excited about sharing all these um, wonderful listening experiences with their, with their parents and their families. I don't believe there's such thing as a perfect teacher and we should strive to be better uh, and that no one is perfect and everyone should be willing to listen to someone else's point of view. Uh, I learn constantly from veteran teachers and brand new teachers that come in and, you know, they said, I did this, and I'm like, I can't believe I didn't think of that. That's like a very simple solution. I read in, in a tweet, actually, that Twitter wasn't developed for teachers, but that the whole system has really been hijacked by the a community of teachers online helping each other out. It's like a it's like a, a help desk out there. I think one of the first things that educators need to realize when they're using IWBs, they get caught up in the tool, but they have to always be members about good instruction. Parents were like so excited because they knew this was their kids' passion, and so. Um, I think it's, again, it's just going to be a vital piece. Um, the parents and the students are a vital piece to making this change happen. My own vision of the way I teach is, okay, ladies and gentlemen, here we are at the, the starting line. Um, there are the mountains beyond, and all I can do is, is be the guide at your side and, and sorry guys, but you've got to do all the hard work and all the running. parent is a child first teacher, um, but our job doesn't stop when we send them to school and put them on a bus and hand them over to the teachers. Um, in fact, that's really when our, our job just kind of ramps up because we need to be there for the teachers. And if the teachers 
know how to get us engaged and we're engaged in a conversation that's working for both ends, then we're really just equipping these students with a much better chance at um, a really great future. So slowly they're coming over to Twitter, but it's taking time. And I think it's the time that people need for, um, uh, you know, the normalization process until they could consider something to be safe, to be non-threatening. Um. Uh, I feel like I've come on to some strategies and some ideas that are really practical, really helpful, and really work and have a track record. And so my idea there is folks like us and all of us have ideas that are worth sharing um, is to leverage that and to give it out there. And I write a blog in which is completely open access. I'm giving away my secrets, if you will.